Welcome to your first seminar video. This will be the first of eight seminar videos that you will watch before attending our live online seminars. In this video, we will talk about the definitions of permaculture, permaculture principles and ethics, as well as zoning. Some of the slides and photos that I will show in this video you will see in your seminar or we will review throughout the semester. So let's get started. If you have any questions or concerns, please email or call me. So what is permaculture? Many of you may have heard different definitions for permaculture before deciding to take this course. But the origins of permaculture start with a man named Bill Mollison, who was an Australian researcher and naturalist. He coined the term with some help from another Australian man named David Holgram. Permaculture stands for permanent agriculture, as stated in my first video. This concept is one that encompasses a holistic approach to an ecological agricultural system, thus a system that provides for nature as well as providing for human settlement. Throughout your readings, discussions, and study of permaculture, you will come across various different definitions and you may even form your own definition for what permaculture is. For the purpose of our course, we will examine permaculture as a way to design production systems through multi-phase annual and perennial crops. So what does permaculture look like? This is one of the questions that I pose so that we can get an idea of what a permaculture system might look like and how to design for it. Permaculture can take many shapes and forms. It can be a principle or ethic of building a system. It can be a small thing such as a rain barrel. It can also be a food forest such as seen in this picture. It could be a young orchard that's building and starting to fruit could be a lasagna garden bed as shown in this picture here where we're building the soil or it could be a bunch of radishes a small and slow solution either way permaculture is a design system based on relationships that are found naturally in ecological systems thus permaculture provides an idea of a holistic system ecology approach that encompasses all of the inputs and outputs of a system, provides for the system, and produces no waste. It is an important thing for us to consider this system versus our industrialized mechanized monocropping system. This example here is one that focuses on systems ecology, which is the idea that each part of a system contributes to another part of the system, and that if one aspect of that system were taken out, or one element were taken out, then that system would not function. This here is considered a functional analysis of a chicken, the silver spangled Hamburg hen. It shows both the needs of this hen and the products and behaviors that are received from the hen. This sort of analysis is one example of how permaculture observes and interacts. You can observe something and determine how much product and behavior you'll get from it for how much input you put in. The point of this is to maximize your output and minimize your input. This sort of functional analysis can be done with various elements of a crop production system. It can be done with perennial crops or annual crops, as well as water systems, soil building. We will discuss all of these things further throughout the semester. Now that we have discussed systems ecology and functional analysis, we can determine permaculture principles and ethics, which are main aspects of what drive permaculture as a study. The basic ethics of permaculture are care for the earth, care for people, and a fair share. The basic principles are to observe and interact, 
produce no waste, design from patterns to details, use and value renewable resources and services, creatively respond to change, value slow and small solutions, catch and store energy, obtain a yield, apply self-regulation, integrate rather than segregate, use and value diversity, use edges and margins. These are the 12 principles that we will discuss throughout our class. We will delve further into them in our first seminar. These are different takes on the principles that somebody had used in their permaculture design course. These ethics and principles are very significant in our study of permaculture. Please review them and come prepared to field lab to use them in an applicable sense outdoors. The last thing I will introduce in this video is permaculture zones and what we call zoning. The permaculture zones are important when you decide to build a crop management plan or to design your own permaculture system. The zones are meant to separate different parts of the region that, or land that you are growing on in terms of maintenance. So the first zone is typically your domestic zone where you live and where you reside. Zone one is typically the zone that you frequent the most and that needs the most maintenance. So it could be an area that you use to prick your salad greens, your herbs, that you'll go and you'll visit and care for very frequently. Zone two usually needs less maintenance and is relatively intensive growing space. This An example of this is orchards or livestock crops. The third zone is considered a main crop area. It could be row crops, it could be your intensive annual production system. And the last zone is considered the woodland zone. This could be a grazing area for larger livestock or it could be a food forest. These zones are meant to help you create your own production systems that minimize your work and maximize your yield. Lastly, this is an example of how a permaculture design system was created with zones. You will create a system similar in your final projects. Thank you for watching this video and remember that this is one of a series of eight videos that you have to watch before your live seminar.